In this chapter, we're going to look at stabilizing motion. And in order to stabilize shaky footage, such as that scene here, this is a handheld shot, which often has this camera shake. And sometimes it's a desirable look and sometimes it's not. But what we're going to do is make this stable by having After Effects go in and track the motion here. So in this movie, that's what we're going to do. We're going to stabilize this. But in the remaining movies in this chapter, we're going to look at what you can do once After Effects has actually followed, or in other words, tracked an object in your scene. It's amazing what you can do with motion tracking. So let's go ahead and go to the window menu at the top and open up the tracker. It's just called tracker here. That opens up the tracker panel. We can't do anything with it because like so many other things in After Effects, we need to do motion tracking in the layer panel. So double click the layer to open this footage in the layer panel. Now in the tracker, we have two choices. We can track motion or we can stabilize motion. And again, the process of doing these is identical. It's the same thing, but we're going to start with stabilizing motion. So I'm going to click stabilizing motion. And then we get this little gizmo here that consists of three things. We have an outer box, an inner box, and a little plus. The plus is really the key point. That's what generates the data. And then this inner box is what we call the feature region. We want to put whatever After Effects is going to follow in this box. So I'm going to zoom out and see my footage. And I might even want to scrub in time and see something that I can follow throughout the course of the shot. I'm looking for something that has motion that is indicative of the motion of the handheld shot. So if I had a bird flying, unless I wanted to track the bird itself, I wouldn't want to track that because that wouldn't help stabilize the background shot. Likewise, I'd want to find something with good contrast. If I zoomed in here, if I grabbed like one of these shrubs over here in this group of shrubs, that would not be a good track because After Effects would lose track of it. No pun intended. So what I'm going to do is move my cursor to the inside of the feature region box. I'll get a move icon. I'm going to click and drag this over to this little lamppost or something, whatever this is. And as you can see, when I'm clicking and dragging, I get kind of like this zoomed in view of what that's going to look like. And that's about where I want it. And so I'm going to let go and actually zoom in. And I'm going to resize my feature region here and maybe click and drag, move this around. And that's about right. We want to make sure that we get all of the thing that we want tracked. I want to make sure that maybe we leave a couple extra pixels around the edges as well. But I don't need too much extra stuff here. That looks about right. And then this outer box is called the search region. And what we want to do is we want to make the search region as big as it needs to to track this from shot to shot. So if from one frame to the next, this object is going to jump way over here to the right side of where my mouse is freaking out over here, then what I would want to do is make my search region that big. But we don't need to make this as big as the object will move over the course of the entire shot, just as big as it will move from frame to frame. And as I'm moving this around here, we can see that it doesn't really move too much from one frame to the next. So we don't need a feature region that big. Now, another issue is that you see that I actually created the track when my current time indicator was at 4 seconds and 16 frames in. That's fine. You could actually go in and start tracking from any point in time. And we could actually track this backwards and we could track it forwards as well. So you basically want to get whatever frame that the object that you're tracking is the most clear. Now, in my case here, I don't want to actually track backwards and forwards because that would just be a little bit tedious. I'm going to hit the home key and then just click and drag and move from the center of the feature region back into place and everything will just kind of move as is. So that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to go back to my tracker panel. And again, making sure that I'm in the layer panel here. And in the tracker panel, I'm going to click this right button, which is analyze forward. And as I click that, it will start moving around. Now you'll notice that this search and feature regions are moving in tandem with this object that we are tracking. It's moving and it's shaking and that's good. That's what we want. What you don't want to happen is for this stuff to kind of drift off to the side. If that does happen, come back to the tracker immediately and stop it. Press the stop button. And everything that you've done already will still be there. But then what you'll need to do is back up in time and then adjust the search and feature regions and then come back and analyze forward again. So a lot of times when you're doing tracking, it's this constant like stop, start, stop, start thing where you are constantly stopping and adjusting and then going back and fiddling with it to make sure you get a good track. And if you are done, it's the end of the work area. And as I'm dragging around, I see that there's constant movement and it looks as if the boxes are following the layer, then that's good. That is a good track. That's what we want. Now, so far in the process, all we've done is we've had After Effects track the motion. That's all that's happened. If we were to go back to our composition now and look at the original layer, we would see no difference whatsoever. What we have to do now is apply the stabilization data to our layer. So what we do here is we can go to Edit Target, and we really don't have a choice. We can only apply the motion to our current layer. So click OK, and then come down at the bottom of the tracker panel. And if you're not seeing this, if it's squished like this, you might need to resize the panel. But go ahead and click the Apply button. You'll then get a tiny pop-up saying, do you want to apply the dimensions in X and Y or just X or just Y? We want X and Y for stabilization. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then it takes us back to our composition. And the first thing you'll notice is that there's a lot of blank space around the edges of every frame. 
And that's because After Effects has to actually move the layer on every frame in order to make this object that we were having it track stay in the same place. So it is a very unusual look because as we scrub here, it used to be that the frame itself was staying in the same spot and then the content was moving around. Now it's the opposite. The content is staying in the same spot, but the frame is moving around. So one of the things that's kind of cool about high definition video becoming more in style, I guess, is that we're dealing with really big frames, big footage. So what we could do, if this were an HD clip, we could put it inside of a smaller clip. Let's say the footage was originally 1920 by 1080 pixels. What we could do is put that inside of a 1280 by 720 size composition, and it would be perfect, and it would crop off these edges. We could also scale this layer up. We can press S and then scale this up so we're not seeing any of those black bars. But the problem with that, of course, is that we lose image quality by doing that. But that sometimes is a necessary evil in order to stabilize footage. So now I'll press the Home key, zoom into 100%, and we'll do a RAM preview here to see what we have. Well, it's definitely much different than it was before. We're still getting a little bit of jitter around the top edge here. But overall, we have an amazingly stable shot where there was a very jerky shot before. So right about now, you might be asking yourself, well, what's the point of tracking motion other than stabilizing motion? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly why you'd want to track motion. Again, it's a very powerful, commonly used feature in After Effects. What I've already done for you here is basically the same process we did in the last movie. If I double-click this cool bird movie, by the way, here's our footage. It's like this little cool bird at the zoo that's moving around and doing some talking there. If I double-click this layer to open up in the layer panel, you'll see that I've already done the tracking for you because the process is the same as stabilizing. So we have like our little point in the middle. We have the feature region and then we have the search region. Same deal. What I decided to track was there was like a shadow here and there's a line of shadow and there's a vertical lines where there's posts. So I decided to track that. That was a little bit risky because horizontal lines are dangerous because After Effects can't get a grip on where the lines stop and start. So often they'll be drifting, which is a bad thing. But because there were stark vertical lines and there was kind of like a diagonal line here, After Effects was able to figure out what was going on and we got a pretty good track out of this. But I have not applied any of that tracking data. What I did is I started by clicking track motion and then I got the same little gizmo here, track the footage, and now what I need to do is click the edit target button and I choose the layer I'm going to apply the motion to. And we have choices now. We have the light, we have the original footage, and then we also have this talking bird 4, which is actually the text that you just saw in the previous composition we were just looking at. And we can't apply the footage to the light or the original footage. We need to use another layer. The only other layer is this text layer, talking bird 4. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to click apply. And I'm going to apply the dimensions X and Y, click OK. And now when we go back to our original footage here, you can see that as this moves around, that the talking bird text moves along with the background. And because there's this cool lighting added here, we're getting this very awesome 3D effect. You'll see this oftentimes in commercials. You see it in the beginning of every episode of the TV show Heroes. They will track motion, and then as the camera's panning in, you'll see text that seems like it's kind of moving along with the camera as if it were there when it were being filmed. And that's kind of the look that we've just created here by using tracking to track the text into our shot. So it's very surreal almost, the look that we've created here by having this fake text that moves in tandem with our layer. It's very interesting. Now, we could also select the light, and sometimes lights are a little bit weird, so we might not be able to get this to work out quite right. But if we select our layer, I'm going to press P for position. And I want to adjust our layer here so that it comes just on Z space. What's happened is that the position has been completely replaced for every single frame. And I want to adjust all keyframes at once. So to adjust all of your keyframes at once, I need to be on a frame with the keyframe, which I can see here, a little gold. Let me know that I'm on a frame with the keyframe. I need to select all of the keyframes, which I can do easily by clicking the name of the property. So by clicking the name of the property and by being on a frame with the keyframe, Whenever I make a change, it will be a change to all the keyframes. So I can click and drag in Z space, make this a negative value, and I'll bring this forward here until I like the shadow on the background. I might need to go back to the light and adjust this a little bit. And that just adds an even greater degree of realism because now we have a three-dimensional shadow in the background that appears that it's almost like on the posts in the back. So. Again, a very realistic effect, and actually let's just wait until that does a RAM preview, and then we'll see the entire little mini project from scratch. Give it just another couple of seconds here, and let's just go ahead and preview that. And there we go. And we have our 3D text with the 3D shadow that appears like it's on the background. 
in the tracking examples we've seen so far in this chapter, After Effects has done just an absolutely amazing job at getting a good track. But unfortunately, that's not really the case all the time. Bless After Effects' little heart. And so After Effects also includes an application called Mocha, which is a program developed just for tracking. And it's capable of achieving a much better track than After Effects. And it works a little bit differently. So I want to show that to you here. I've launched Mocha. I'm going to go ahead and click Start here on this welcome screen. And then I'm going to go to File, New Project to create a new project. The top Import Clip to track. I'm going to select Choose. And I'm going to navigate to the Video folder inside the Media folder inside the Exercise Files. And I'm going to select the same Cool Bird clip that we used before. I'm going to go ahead and click Open. Once you've imported this clip, we get information about the project. We can name it here. We get options, a frame range. We get advanced settings here as well. So you basically want to make sure that your settings here match the settings from the original footage. Now it's saying here that my pixel aspect ratio is custom. It's a 0.56. If I go back to After Effects, I can see that the footage actually uses a 1.0. In other words, a square pixel aspect ratio. So I'm going to go to this pixel aspect ratio drop down inside Mocha, and I'm going to search for a square pixel aspect ratio. I'm not really seeing that. So let's go ahead and just select this and just type 1.0 and tab away from that. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And I'll go ahead and click Yes here. So here we have the same footage as before with the bird. Here is the timeline in Mocha. So we could click here with our current time indicator. And we could click and drag and move this back. And what I'm going to do is we don't track with points in Mocha. And that's one of its benefits because with points, they get obscured easily. And they're often difficult to track because of the differences in noise and pixels. And so Mocha actually tracks areas. So I'm going to go ahead and click this X area right here. It's the X spline layer tool in the top of the toolbar here in Mocha. And I'm going to select the same area that I used for the bird that I only mentioned last time. But this time we'll actually see it in play. I'm going to click here once, let go, click and let go, click and let go, click and let go. And then I'm going to right click to end my spline here. And we could also click and drag and move these points around if we want to change things. But that's pretty much good as it is now to get a good track. And so to start tracking, we go over here to the right area underneath the timeline. And I'm going to click this button here, which is Track Forwards, very similar to the button found in After Effects. So I'm going to click that. And we notice that without even setting up like a distinct point or a search region or a feature region, we just click that spline and Mocha is off and running. Another thing that After Effects cannot track, at least not very well, is differences in depth as far as like objects moving towards you. And Mocha can track that. Give this another few seconds here. And we'll go ahead and wait till this is done. Okay, so Mocha has finished tracking. And if I scrub this backwards, you could see that, again, we're not getting any drift here. So Mocha knew what was going on, and it followed this crazy random area throughout the entire shot, which is very cool. Now, one of the things that's a little bit different than what we've seen so far is that we have these four points. And Mocha is referred to as a planar tracker, as opposed to After Effects' point tracker, which tracks a single point. We're tracking an area here in Mocha. So this is great for like removing computer screens and that type of thing that have an area like this. However, in this case, when we export this to After Effects, it's actually going to export this as an area like this. We're going to get a little bit different results, we predict. So let's go over here to Export Data, and I'm going to click on Export Tracking Data. Go ahead and click this and change the format to After Effects' Transform Data. We'll go ahead and click that and go ahead and copy it to the clipboard. Next, I'm going to go back to After Effects in our project here. I'm going to select our text, and then because it's copied to the clipboard, I'm simply going to select a layer and press Command-V or Control-V on the PC to paste this tracking data. And it moves it off the screen a little bit. That's okay. Let's go ahead and press A for Anchor Point and Shift-P for Position. Now, you'll notice that Anchor Point and Position have keyframes throughout the entire animation on every frame as opposed to After Effects tracking data, which only uses Position. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and click on Anchor Point making sure that we're on a frame with the keyframe. And I'm going to adjust the Z value and actually the X and Y too. So I'm going to adjust the X, drag this down and Y, and just get that to where we like it. And let's go ahead and move it forward at Z space. And we could preview this. And it looks great. We're even getting a little bit more jerkiness. It's almost like following things a little bit more closely here. So we're almost getting some dimensional movement as well. So pretty cool track. We don't have to preview this entire thing. But let's back up and see what we have so far. Looks pretty good. So again, the same type of results as we saw with After Effects' tracker, but it was a little bit easier with Mocha, and there's just a lot more power there as well.